authoritarianism in the modern world is sly and clever. <clears throat> it has had so much practice over the centuries to gain ground in the modern world through convenience, subversion, and coercion, rather than fortifications and invasion. The words of the authoritarian have refined themselves. Safety, security, equity, unity, strength. All words have double meaning. The meaning of the words themselves and the meaning of the voice which utters them. The voice of the authoritarian has refined itself as well, suggesting and convincing rather than dominating and commanding. The great enterprise, the American Revolution, is a drop in the bucket through all of human history. It is a bright, shining light where the human body and mind wasn't owned by a king or by the aristocracy, by divine decrees or codified in genealogical institutions. The American enterprise is such that it cannot grant rights to its citizens because those rights have been bestowed upon them by birth. The legal authority of the American enterprise is to limit action upon its citizens. The government exists by what it cannot do. The citizen is by what they can do. There is no permission to be granted. There is no grand king to hand down to you this great responsibility of liberty. It is already there. The American enterprise isn't perfect because the human beings are not perfect. The ales of the, the, ales of the American past are what they are, figments of a larger past. This grows the conviction in those who demand that the enterprise is null because of these faults and flaws. This is to think with a utopian mindset that the American enterprise, because of itself, will eradicate all the ails of the human spirit. This, of course, is nonsensical. Anything that is created under the auspices of human nature will suffer the effects of human nature. The American enterprise is no different. What does grow within the American enterprise are the efforts and advances, slow and inconsistent as they may be, to thwart the lesser nature of human beings, to overcome these flaws without eradicating what makes us human. Thus comes modern authoritarianism. It is sly because it lives in human nature, that potential for the worst in mankind, that the American enterprise cannot rewrite human nature, but offers each human being the freedom to overcome their inherent natures, allows authoritarianism its slow rise. Governance is overcome by politics, and politics takes active rather than passive action, forming the state. The state has only one active purpose, its own existence. Statism is the death of the American enterprise. Think of going to a job that pays quite well, with only a vague description of what that job is. Essentially, a job where you make work for yourself to do. This is the modern lawmaker. If all the laws that are necessary are put into place, there is no other need for the lawmaker. But what if there is a sudden need for a new law? Better still, that it contradicts a previous law. Better still, in order to remove all laws, the lawmaker has to write the, a law that eliminates it. Better still, as an unintended consequence, there was something that new law intended to do, and a new law was made to reform it. Laws upon laws, laws against laws, to rewrite laws and subvert old laws. Redundant laws over insignificant things and laws that are outmoded and still exist. It is such hard work inventing work for yourself, this modern statecraft, that you and your ilk vote as you do for the laws for your own pay increases. In context with human nature, what pivotal shift in the American enterprise where lawmakers invent work for themselves to justify their existence, and in doing so, make themselves absurdly wealthy. There can be no confusion as to why authoritarianism is corrupting the American enterprise. <laughs>